Well, good morning and welcome back to the workshop. Um, I wanted to clarify something that happened in the last video. A piece of footage that I missed out of the last video was showing you why I was using those silver steel pins in the ends of these axle centers to check the coupling rods. And the reason for that is these frames were part machined when I received them and part of that machining were these horn slots inside the, uh, the horn castings and they were very tapered so in, I needed to get those straightened out and in doing so I made them all the correct width and the same thickness and that, that's all fine um, but potentially I might have shifted the center of that, um, that slot one way or another. Right, I've traversed from this side of this axle to this side of this axle, and I make it 10 inches, 735 thou, uh, which means we're 15 thou uh, to closer together than the, the drawings, um, but we expected that because we did so much machining on these horn box slots here to get a nice fit. So, um, I think actually this is the literally the last adjustment I'm going to have to make relative to the uh, machining that had already been done on these parts, which I'm very pleased at. The spec was 10 inch 750 and we're at 10 inch 736 or 735. So I'm going to measure a couple more times just to make sure before I make a fool of myself. And I repeated that a bunch of different times and came up with 10 inches 736 foul. And that's what I traversed on the coupling rods, drilled that first set of holes and created those two pins to validate on the sensors on the ends of these axles. So that's why I did that. So apologies, I, I should have included that. But a bit of a brain fart there, I didn't, didn't get around to it. Given the success of that alignment, I'm now using them as a drill guide for the second coupling rod. Right, so, so there are the rods. Hopefully these centers uh, are still matching over here. I, I won't be able to tell because these are now 9 sixteenths and the pins on the wheels are 7 sixteenths and that's because I need to turn some bushes out of bronze. Having got myself a nice set of spotting drills, I don't tend to use center drills uh, for starting off holes and pieces of stock but actually we're going to need a center in this so I'm going to use an actual center drill. Yeah, I'm definitely being a bit of a coward here, but I'm going to saw this last bit off because uh, I'm worried that when I go through, this thing is going to get caught between the dead centre and the workpiece. Here's a little trick with the aluminium cans here. Um, apparently they're quite consistent in thickness and I've found that to be the case. So just cut a strip off, wrapped it around the shaft of the bearing here and I'm going to face off the back. Right, well, now making my second one, that first one, I got the measurements a little wrong, uh, although it did fit nicely. And I'm changing up my order of operations. I've now drilled and reamed the center here. I've turned the OD to the major diameter of the bush, and now I'm about to turn the internal diameter. And the idea then being I can cut or part through this um, and repeat that process using the same numbers on the dials uh, each time to turn these different uh, diameters and though they're going to be exactly the same I can, can repeatedly drill and ream and then all in one go I can turn them around get them in here and face off the back to the correct lengths and then I've written <laughs> this is actually wrong but now these aren't polished up yet and they need to be a bit deburred but there is a really nice fit there I'm really pleased with that Thank <laughs> you. 
And this is the last of the actual production bearings. Uh, I need to take off this back face. And having done three already, I've noted down the, uh, the lead screw position. So I can just wind it in and, and it will get down to here and it'll be exactly the same as all the rest. Of course, a little deburring. Well, that's the end of the video, but not the end of the story. Now we've got two coupling rods with the bushes that I'm quite happy with. There's lots of aesthetic machining to go on here, decorative fluting and so on. And I don't want to do that until I can validate 100% that these spacings between these bushes is correct. I can't quite do that yet though, because I need to have both wheels on each axle fixed in place and quartered. Um, and then have these fitted on both sides. And I can wheel the locomotive round and in theory it should... Uh, should be nice and nice and free moving. I can't fix at least one of those axles because one of those axles is a dummy axle. The actual real crank axle, obviously, looks like this. Uh, but this is a Stevenson's Link version of the crank axle with the eccentric sheaves here for the valve gear. I'm not going to be making the Stevenson's Link version because in the original drawings it's not actually functional. Uh, and I'm going to be building the Joy valve gear version. The long and short of that is I'm finally going to get a chance to use my Siva propane torch and get some brazed action going on with a crank axle. But that's going to have to be another video, I'm afraid. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.